So I'd like to welcome you all to this webinar. And uh, as you already know, our topic for today is going to be email analytics at your fingertips. We are going to see a lot of statistics that we have in hand in Zoho Mail and how it is going to be useful for you is something that I'll be discussing with you today in today's webinar. And before we start, I just want to give you a heads up, which is if you have any questions, you can post it in the Q&A section. Again, if you have any feedbacks or comments that is relative to this topic, that is again, you can post it in the Q&A section of ours. And we have our experts that we have called from our team and they are ready to answer all of your questions. Moving on to the webinar. In today's section, we have uh, Vigneshwar from my team and he has joined here with me and he will be answering all of your questions. He is a senior technical support engineer of our Zoho Mail product and myself, I am Priyanka and I'm a product expert of Zoho Mail and I'll be the presenter of today's session. So the agenda for today is going to be, we will be seeing statistics which are specific to your organization, incoming emails, outgoing emails, and users. So if you are going to ask me what is the use of the same is, when you see these specific statistics and when you learn to analyze the same, you'd be able to infer a lot of information about the email communication and its management techniques. Yes, you heard me right. These statistics will give you that knowledge and I'm going to teach you how you can easily understand it. In the first topic, we will be seeing organization statistics as we already saw. And in that, you're going to see the first stats, which is going to be security score. So before I go into the details, let me get you to the actual UI. So this is the Zoho Mail UI and here, you can go and click on the avatar and there you will find admin console. All right, so this is the admin console page of your Soho Mail. Here you can find a basic dashboard available for you. You can find information such as your organization name, your domain name of your organization, and then who is the super admin and what plan you are in, all that information will be available here. Additionally, you will also find how many domains you've added, how many users you've created, how many groups you've created, and how many license you have bought. That will be listed. And you will have some basic stats available here, ranging from security, organization, user summary, email traffic, and storage. We will be going through all of these stats in detail, but yes, this is the basic dashboard that will be available for you in the admin console. But if you want to see an even more advanced dashboard and statistics and reports, then you will have to go to reports section. For you to find that, go to the left pane and in the bottom, you will find reports. Click on that. And that will take you to a page such as this. Here, you will find all the advanced stats and reports that are available for your organization. Here, again, you will find the domains that you've created, the users you've created, groups you've created, and the number of email policies that you have set for your organization will be there. And then you have another category, which is my favorite report. So if at all you find any report to be very useful and important, you can mark it as favorite and there the count will be shown there. And let's see some of the basic customizations available. Here you have summary view and graphical view. Let's see how it works. Clicking on the summary view, you will have all the data with numbers and graphical view will allow you to see all the stats this way. And here you have a custom range that you can uh, given, for example, if I want to see the stats that is available for the last seven days, then you can go with the first option. If you want to given a custom range, again, you can go with the last option, custom range, and you can give in a period of time. And the stats will be narrowed down for that period of time at and it will be shown for you. In the bottom, you will find customize organization dashboard. By clicking on that, you can enable and disable some of your stats from the actual dashboard. So if I'm going to disable some of the stats, it will disappear from the view. And if I want to enable them back, you have to go to the disabled section 
and you can enable them back. All right. Yes, now we are done with the basic customization and basic information which are available in the dashboard. Now it's time for us to get into the details. So as we already saw, we have organization statistics and under which you have a particular stat called security score. So security score talking about this, I want you guys to first understand that for every organization, you will have business communications and you will mainly do that through emails. So when it is a business communication, you might have the exchange of a lot of confidential data and you do not want that to be compromised at any point. You want that data to be very, very secure, right? So for you to ensure that your organization data and the communication is being secure, you can find the security score in this particular stat. This says how secure your organization communication is being done. Right. So here you can see that the organization security score is given in accordance to 17 different actions that you do in your organization settings. So let me go through one by them. One by one, telling you what are all the actions that you need to do in your organization settings for your organization to reach a security score of 100 percent. So in your security score, you can find. The first three things is going to be some of the verification that ranges from DKIM, SPF, and DMARC. To explain them in simple words, SPF is a kind of check or a verification that happens when you receive an email. So when you usually receive an email, it could be a legitimate email or there is a chance that it might be sent by a spoofer, that it is not a legitimate mail. So at that point, you need some of the verifications to be there so that your organization doesn't receive any emails just like that. So SPF is such a verification check which happens at the server level so that it only lets the legitimate mails to fall into your inbox. And then you have DKIM verification, which is a little bit advanced verification compared to the SPF. And then you have DMARC, which is a combination of SPF and DKIM. So when these verifications are done, you can uh, have a definite idea that this mail is a legitimate mail. So what are all the other verifications available is you have something called as DNS blacklist or DNS BL verification. What is that is certain domains uh, might be used by the spoofers a lot and those domains tend to lose their reputation. So these domains will be added in the external websites or third party websites as blacklisted domains. When your organization is receiving a mail from such a domain, then it will be marked as spam. It is because of this DNS blacklist verification. So that's a verification that usually happens so that so if certain domains lose their reputation and is marked in a uh, website or third party website saying it is a blacklisted domain, then you do not want to receive any emails from that domain, would you? So at that point, the verification happens and it will be marked as spam. So that is DNSBL verification. And then you have a cousin domain verification. Cousin domain verification and display name verifications are an exciting kind of verification because in this kind of spam process, um, you have, let's just take for an example, you have Amazon. And if I'm going to replace the Amazon O with a zero, then it still looks like Amazon. So when you receive a mail, if you if the domain name is similar to the actual one, as a user, I might not uh, you know tediously check that or you know scrutinize and check it. We might simply open it, and it might contain some malicious attachments, or I might open certain links in the mail, and that might compromise my company's data. For me to avoid that situation, I can add all of the domains which are suspectable and I can add it in the cousin domain verification section. When I do that, whenever I receive a mail with that domain, it cross verifies if it is the actual domain or not, and then it will allow the email to fall into my inbox. And then you have display name verification. Uh, display name verification is um, in an organization, you will have a lot of default de display names such as CEO, manager, payroll, finance, something like that. So if a spoofer is going to, uh, you know, brainly use 
a, a particular display name which is being used in every organization as a user i might not check the email address but i would still believe the display name and i would allow those emails and i will simply open it and access those emails but for me to avoid the situations i can add the display name along with the right email addresses in my display name verification section and once that is done when i receive a mail with a similar display name then it will cross verifies if it matches with the right email address and then it will direct it to my inbox all right so that's about cousin domain verification and display name verification and then you have something called as internationalized spam settings this is a particular setting which will allow your organization to restrict emails in accordance with their language and country right and then you have suspicious login alerts and no trusted senders until now we saw all of the verification that you can set for your organization for all the mails that you receive now we're going to see how what are all the settings that are available for your organization in general here you have suspicious login alerts which means if your user is login is logging in through different ip addresses then is then that is a suspectable uh, you know action then as a super admin or an admin in your organization you would want to cross verify if it is the actual user or if a spoofer is using the user's email address you can cross verify you can analyze and if you feel like blocking the user's account for the time being you can still do it and once you are confirmed that it was by the user for the vpn reasons or something like that you can unblock the account or if it was actually a spoofer's activity you can block the account retrieve it and then let the user use it so that's about less suspicious login alerts and then you have no trusted senders to explain this you need to know what is the trusted list in the first place so uh, there are certain cases when a domain will be marked as spam even when it is a legitimate domain even when it is an when it is a domain that you need access to so at that point when it is marked as spam in order for you to avoid the email addresses or the emails sent by the domain to fall into your spam what you can do is you can add those domains in your trusted list then you are simply instructing your organization to not do any spam process for these domains so when you are receiving emails from these domains it will be received in your inbox instead of your spam folders so here it says no trusted senders so you have to make sure you do not add any domains without cross verifying if it is a legitimate domain or not because when you add them you have to know that the no spam processes will be happening for that particular domain all right and then you have i'm sorry yep so uh, as we already saw what are all the checks and verifications we do for the emails that we receive we also saw some of the general settings now we are going to discuss about something where your emails are being involved so as you have an organization there are several other organizations so when you send an email to another organization that particular organization has to recognize your mails as a legitimate mail yes right so for that you have to configure some of the records which are very important and very necessary for the other or other organization to recognize your organization emails as legitimate emails you have dmark policy dkim configuration and spf record configuration these are the three different records which you have to configure in your dns page in order for your organization emails to be marked as legitimate emails and then you have mx record configuration mx record configuration is nothing but an email delivery so uh, you need to instruct the incoming emails as to where it has to land so those information is something that you will update in your dns page simply you will update your server details saying all the incoming emails have to fall in this particular server and then you have s slash mime configuration it is simply a certification that you can upload and keep it in your organization and when you send an email to another organization the organization might screen for the certification and then allow the email to fall into their inbox 
and then you have no presence of own domain in trusted domains so this is simply an instruction to not add your own domain in the trusted list and then you have organization wide tfa so for you to understand this or for those who do not know what is a tfa is let me explain you tfa is two factor authentication so when a user is logging into their account their user credentials can be easily used by another one to log in as well so two factor authentication is a screening method which does an extra screening to ensure that the user is the actual user who is logging in so how does it actually work is after you play paste the password and the username it will ask you to either give your fingerprint or an otp or uh, or a mail um, mail numbers or something like that so it will do an extra level of checking in order for it to log in the user but for every user to have access to this particular feature you need to enable organization wide tfa and only then the user will be able to make use of this feature and then you have group privilege settings so when you create a group you need to set some rules why do you need rules is not that anybody at all should be able to uh, send emails to your group email address also not that anybody at all in the group should be able to use the group email address as a from address right so that's where rules come in you can set the rules as to who should be able to send emails to the group and who should be able to use the group email address as a from address so these are all some of the settings that you need to do for your organization in order for you to get the security score as 100% for your organization yes let's see the actual start in the ui here you will have security score and here you can see low moderate good and excellent in accordance with the marks and here you can see how many total actions to be completed and how many are completed and how many are incomplete all right and then if you want to see show reports you can go on that you can also select the export option to export the export the particular stat if you want a broader view you can go with the expand and if you want to simply hide the stat from the dashboard you can click on this okay. moving on to the next topic under this particular section you have email size so uh, why is this important this particular stat is important is that for any organization, you should have an estimated volume of emails that you receive and send. And you need to compare that estimation with the actual stat. Once that is done, you'll be able to better infer if there are unwanted emails being sent and received. That way, you can avoid uh, all the spoof emails, unwanted emails, unsubscribe, unsubscribe to a lot of uh, domain so that you will not flood your inbox with unwanted emails same way you can uh, review all the outgoing emails and make sure all the outgoing emails are very important for your organization right so that's about the volume of or you know reviewing the volume of incoming and outgoing emails of your organization moving on to the next tab under this topic which is going to be license usage so uh it's normal that any organization or any company would recruit a lot of users and you need to know how many licenses should be available in order for you to uh, provide login IDs to all of the newly recruited users. So for that, you need not go to the uh, you know, intrinsic uh, uh, spaces in order for you to understand this particular stat. You can simply come to the dashboard and you can see how many licenses are used and how many licenses are available. And from here, you can come to an understanding how many licenses are yet to be purchased and you can make the purchase and you can provide the licenses to your organization users. Right, and we are done with this particular section, which is organization statistics. Moving on to the next section. Now we saw a broader statistics as to which applies to every user in your organization, all the incoming emails, all the, all the outgoing emails, and also some general settings in your organization. Now we are going to get into specifics as to incoming email statistics. This only applies for all the incoming emails. So under that, we're going to see the first topic is going to be incoming email traffic. So this tells you how many emails have been received by your organization. 
And in that, it has categorized them into two types, which is emails from internal and emails from external. So uh, it says how many number of emails are being received from external domains and how many emails are being received internally, the internal communication within your organization. All right. And then why is this stat important is that this stat allows you to compare with a lot of other stats. So if you, for you to understand all the other stats, you need to understand the simple stat of how many emails are being received first. So let me compare it with the next stat and you'll be able to better understand. The second stat is going to be spam report. And here you can see how many emails are sent to your organization and how many emails are actually landing in the spam folders instead of, of the inbox. Here you can see how many spam, spam emails are being sent to your organization. So with that, you can come to an understanding if you need further analysis, further security for your organization or not. So for you to understand this, you need the first stat where you get a simple understanding of how many emails are being uh, sent to your organization internally and from external domains. And then you can compare it with this stat and you can see how many spam emails are landing in your organization. Moving on to the next stat, you can also get even more information that is authentication report. This exactly says why the failure is happening. What failure are we talking about here? The email that is received by your organization, if it is regarded as a spam email, it simply means it has failed some of the authentication steps. And what authentication it has failed is something that you can check here. SPF fail, SPF soft fail, and DKIM fail. So these are all the possible failures the email must have gone through. Let me explain you these failures a little bit for you so that you'll be able to understand. SPF soft fail uh, simply says that this email is probably, you know, sent by an illegitimate server. SPF hard fail says this is definitely a mail that is not legitimate. DKIM fail is an even more advanced verification compared to the SPF. And that again says this email is definitely not a legitimate email. All right. So in this stat, when you see all of the spam checks and which has the majority of failures, you can come to an inference, which is if there is a lot of SPF soft fail, then you can come to an understanding that soft fail is for probably this is a legitimate mail or illegitimate mail. So what you can do is you can check the domains from which these emails are being sent and you can check cross verify if the domain is a legitimate domain or not. And then you can cross verify the details of the particular email and you can categorize them as legitimate emails or not. If you feel that the domain was actually legitimate domain and all of those emails were necessary for your organization, then you can add that particular domain into your trusted list so that it will not send emails to your spam folder, but it will land into your inbox. There's also another case. If you have SPF fail or SP DKIM fail a lot, then it means that you are receiving a lot of unwanted emails. Then again, you can mark those, those particular domains and email addresses in the blocked list, and you can allow them to get rejected instead of falling into your spam folders. Because spam folder is again a folder. If it is getting, going to get accumulated, then again, that will utilize your space, right? So that is about SPF fail, SPF soft fail, and DKIM fail. So now we're done with the authentication report. We are moving on to the next report, which is quarantine report. What is quarantine report is something that I'm going to explain you right now. Quarantine report is uh, nothing but let's just come to quarantine in the first place. Quarantine is a space that the admin has for themselves. So if they feel like my user is my users in my organizations are getting a lot of spam emails. And they do not find the time to find which domain is legitimate, which is not, and to review them, review the information about the emails, and then get them into the inbox. They are finding it difficult. And also, the spam emails are accumulating a lot of space in their accounts. Then what the admin can do is they can access this quarantine space. Quarantine space is a space which will receive the spam emails sent to an organization first. 
it will come and land there first as an admin i can review that email myself i won't be able to see the contents of the mail but i will be able to see the header information about the mail for those who do not know what is an header information header information about a mail is uh, is something which contains uh, where the email has traveled uh, which server it has gone through before it has landed into the actual server by knowing that you can categorize them as legitimate emails or not and after i review it i can take the decision if i want to accept the email or deny it if i'm going to accept it it will get successfully delivered into the inbox of my respective user or if i'm going to deny it then it will be completely rejected this particular stat will let you know how many quarantine emails were received how many were delivered how many were denied and how many were re-delivered so if you're going to tell me as an admin i might get very few number of quarantine emails and i might actually know the numbers myself but the answer is no because you will have multiple admins in your organization and only one super admin in that case if another admin is attending to these quarantine as one of the admins i want to know uh, what has happened in the quarantine space how many emails have been denied for me to know i can simply come to this stat take a look at it and i can get in all the information that i want so that's about the stat quarantine report moving on to the next report which is rejection type report rejection type report just uh, gives you a stat of how many emails have been rejected and in what category they were rejected if it had malicious attachments if it had virus or if it was dns blacklisted or if it was pbl pbl is nothing but ip blacklist so there are certain ips which are blacklisted by the third party websites and if you receive emails from those ips it will be rejected it's simple as that yes rejection type report allows you to see how many emails have been rejected and what category they've been rejected so i think we are done with the second section of the webinar as well moving on to the next section which is outgoing email statistics so we saw which was specific to incoming and now we are moving to the next section which is outgoing emails so outgoing emails you have the first topic is going to be outgoing email traffic here you can see the basic information of how many emails are being sent by your organization and that is again categorized into internal emails and external emails so how many emails are being sent within your organization and how many emails are being sent external to your organization domain by getting this basic stat you can further analyze uh, analyze with comparing it with this particular stat which is bounce reports what is bounce reports is here you can see how many emails are sent by your organization and how many emails are getting bounced back so why do you need this uh, particular stat is bouncing emails can happen because of a lot of reasons uh, one could be because there's some mistake at the receiver's end or your emails have failed in some of the verification that is done in the receive receiver's end so for you to be in a safer side, you need to make sure that your email does not fail any of the verification that is done at the receiver's end. So for that, you need to make sure that your organization has done all of the records, uh, configured all of the records, which could range from DMARC, DKIM, and SPF. These three are very important. Make sure to configure them for your organization so that when you send an email to an external organization, that organization will, will recognize your emails as a legitimate email. All right. And we are moving on to the last section of the webinar, which is users statistics. We saw everything about emails and organization settings. Now we're going to get specific about users. In user statistics, the first topic is going to be user summary. In this particular stat, you can see active users, inactive users, and admin users what is the use of this particular stat is we saw a stat which was a license usage didn't we there we saw how many licenses are available and how, how many licenses have been utilized this particular stat lets you know how many users are inactive they could be inactive because you've removed them from your company they've left the company or uh, it could simply mean their roles 
do not need an account in the first place. Email communication is not necessary for them. In that place, again, you can infer all of those information from this basic stat and you can utilize those licenses for an actual user, for a user which, who, for who it is going to be really useful. All right. And that's about active users and active users and admins, which are listed against user summary. This is another stat which comes under user statistics, which is storage reports. In storage reports, what you can find is you can see the top 10 users who use the storage the most. And uh, you can also categorize them as to how many storage or how much storage they've utilized for mail, retention, and backup. So what you can infer from this is either this user is really needing so much storage and might need even more in the future, or this user might receive a lot of spam emails and they are sending, sending out a lot of unwanted emails. You can review all of that for your organization. And if you feel that the mails that were sent and received were very important for your organization and still the user needed space and will need even more space in the future, you can allot them additional storage. You can buy additional storage for the specific user and allot it to them. That is for very few user cases. But if there are a number of users who will need uh, extra storage and there are, again, a number of users who will not need that much of storage, then you can go with the plan that, that is called as flexible plan that we have, where you can buy different plans and you can allot it to different users instead of going with one plan. All right. So that is something that you can infer and make use of by knowing this particular stat. And yeah. Let me get to this dashboard and show some of the other options available for you. We saw all of these stats. We are done with the stats and their details. But I want to show you some of the other options available in the stats for you right now. All right, let's take the first stat, for example. Here you have email size. By clicking on show reports, it will take you to a page where you will find additional information. Here you can see the people who've sent the emails the most, outgoing traffic says the number and outgoing traffic traffic by size will give you information about the size of the emails sent by this person. And then you have incoming traffic and incoming traffic by size. You can see the list of users who have used the most of the storage for this. Right? And again, going back. We already saw how you can export, how you can expand and hide. But one thing that we did not see is how you can change the chart type. By clicking on this, you can change the chart type in the ways that you want to see it, in the way that is going to be appealing for you. You can change to any one of them and you can save it. All right, I think that is something that I want to show you and I'm done with all of these stats. And yes, 